discuss about mitral stenosis from an anesthetist's point of view. What is mitral stenosis? It is simply narrowing of the mitral valve orifice. Let's talk about the causes of mitral stenosis. Most common cause of mitral stenosis is rheumatic heart disease by far. There are other causes like congenital abnormalities of the valves. Very rare causes like cor triatriatum, a large left atrial neoplasm, pulmonary vein obstruction. So th these are some of the causes of uh, mitral stenosis. Rheumatic mitral stenosis is a slowly progressive mitral stenosis from asymptomatic phase to development of severe symptoms may last from 10 to 20 years of uh, time span. They are generally symptomatic only once the valve area becomes less than 2.5 cm square. Because the valve area is important, they are classified as mild, moderate and severe based on the valve areas. So mild mitral stenosis is uh, that of valve area from 2.5 cm square to one and a half centimeter square. These patients are usually not symptomatic at rest but only on exercise or when they develop fever or when they have atrial fibrillation etc. Then comes moderate mitral stenosis with a valve area of one and a half centimeter square to one centimeter square. These patients can develop symptoms even at rest. Then comes the severe mitral stenosis of less than one centimeter square valve area. Now what symptoms can they develop? One of the first symptoms that a patient of mitral stenosis develops is dyspnea. Other symptoms include palpitations. About 10 to 20 percent of the patients develop thromboembolic complications. Chest pain is another symptom that they can develop. This is not because of coronary artery disease but because of right ventricular hypertrophy. Why are symptoms important? or the severity of symptoms important is because the severity of the symptoms predicts the outcome of the patient. In studies generally they found that mild symptoms, patients with mild symptoms have a 10 year survival rate of around 80% whereas patients of mitral stenosis with severe disabling symptoms have a 10 year survival period of only 15%. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of mitral stenosis in rheumatic heart disease. It begins with valve leaflet thickening and uh, fusion of the commissures. Later on what happens is there is additional leaflet calcification and subvalvular caudal fusion. All these changes lead to a decrease in the mitral valve area. Because there is decrease in the mitral valve area, this leads to decreased diastolic flow into the left ventricle. Now let's follow this sequence that occurs as a result of the changes that was described earlier. Because of the narrowing of the mitral valve area, it leads to a fixed obstruction. This fixed obstruction causes an increase in the pressure gradient across the valve from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Because of this increased pressure gradient, the left atrial pressure increases. The increase in the left atrial pressure is naturally reflected onto the pulmonary circulation leading to pulmonary venous congestion and later on pulmonary arterial pressures are increased. When these changes become chronic, there will be pulmonary vasculatures 
hypertrophy leading to pulmonary artery hypertension now once there is pulmonary artery hypertension that is reflected onto the right heart as well leading to right ventricular end diastolic volume and right ventricular end diastolic pressure to increase beyond a certain point that leads to right heart failure one must remember that left atrial enlargement is a prominent feature in this disease and this left atrial enlargement leads to a risk of atrial fibrillation let's come to this concept of why tachycardia is bad for mitral stenosis for which you need to know this formula called gorlin formula which will be shown in the screen which describes the valve area as equal to transvalvular flow rate divided by a constant into root of the pressure gradient across the valve first of all when there is tachycardia or an increase in the heart rate what is cut short is the diastolic time and therefore the left ventricle has to fill up faster which means there must be flow across the mitral valve at a faster rate this is what is happening okay let us describe it using gorlin's formula which describes a valve area as equal to transvalvular flow rate divided by a constant into root of the pressure gradient across the valve given that the valve area is constant now if you double the flow rate across the valve you can see that the pressure gradient becomes four times and therefore increased pressure gradient and as we saw the pathway leads to increased left atrial pressure reflecting onto the pulmonary system leading to dyspnea now let's have a look at the pressure volume loops in the case of mitral stenosis as you know pressure volume loop is described with volume on the x axis and pressure on the y axis this point that was shown with an arrow this represents the closing of the mitral valve this phase is the phase of isovolumetric contraction wherein the left ventricle contracts against the closed mitral valve this point represents the opening of the aortic valve and this leads to left ventricular ejection leading to continuous decrease in the volume this point represents the closure of the aortic valve this represents the phase of isovolumetric relaxation wherein the pressure drops with the volume being constant this point represents the opening of the mitral valve and this represents the filling of the left ventricle having said that as you can see the curve marked in green is the one of mitral stenosis if you see here from the point of opening of the mitral valve till the point of closure of the mitral valve the left ventricular inflow is decreased therefore left ventricular end diastolic volume is decreased and this is the curve of mitral stenosis left ventricular end systolic volume 2 is decreased slightly so this decrease in left ventricular end diastolic volume and the left ventricular end diastolic pressure leads to a decrease in the stroke volume now who should undergo surgery in mitral stenosis depends on the symptoms patients with nyha 
class 3 and class 4 they are better off with surgery because without surgery their outcome is poor those that fall in the mild category that is two and a half to one and a half centimeter square valve area who are asymptomatic or are mildly symptomatic they can be followed up periodically and might not immediately require surgery what about ones who are who fall in the moderate category in this category a careful evaluation of the patient has to be done anybody who has increased pulmonary artery hypertension that more than 50 millimeters of mercury those who have severe disabling symptoms those who have increased pulmonary artery pressure on exercise or symptoms brought on by exercise they are to be taken up for surgery what what all procedures can be done percutaneous mitral commissurotomy via the transvascular route they reach the mitral valve and a balloon tipped catheter is placed in the valve and the dilation of this balloon breaks the fused commissures this is a fairly common procedure that is currently performed there is also surgical commissurotomy but all patients are not suitable for commissurotomy those who have concurrent mitral regurgitation or who have heavy calcification of the valves advanced age these are all patients who are not suitable candidates for commissurotomy in those kind of patients mitral valve replacement is a, an option now let's talk about anesthetic goals in a patient of ms undergoing surgery goal number one prevent tachycardia this is very important as we said tachycardia increases the transvalvular pressure gradient and it can worsen the symptoms decrease the stroke volume as well so at all costs prevent tachycardia if tachycardia develops treat it goal number two maintain the preload but also ensure that there is no pulmonary vascular congestion in the process of maintaining the preload goal number three avoid increases in pulmonary artery hypertension and thus right heart failure so talking about goal number one that is to control tachycardia patients who are on drugs like digitalis beta blockers calcium channel blockers amiodarone all these drugs are to be continued if need for additional beta blockers or calcium channel blockers are felt they have to be supplemented as well because the ventricular response control is essential patients who are anxious and this have tachycardia they can be treated with sedatives and narcotics but you must keep in mind that giving of sedatives can cause hypoventilation and hypoxia hypoxemia and pulmonary artery hypertension and the complications thus so care must be taken to avoid this now to main maintain the preload the steps would be adequate monitoring invasive arterial pressure monitors pulmonary artery catheters through which you can measure the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and uh, pulmonary diastolic pressure although these might not give an accurate reading the trends will help us in deciding the fluid now talking about the third goal of avoiding pulmonary artery hypertension mild hyperventilation would help in those patients who have concurrent mitral regurgitation or severe pulmonary artery hypertension use of vasodilator therapy would help so these are the anesthetic goals in patients with mitral stenosis so this is briefly about mitral stenosis and anesthesia thank you very much have a nice day